So what is this, part five anyways? Uh, we're starting off here with HP Lovecraft's From Beyond. From the creator's reanimator. Humans are such easy prey. So we got this is a Stuart Gordon film. He directed it. Put out by Charles Band. Uh, uh, brother Richard Band actually did the music for it. Actually, I have the soundtrack for this on vinyl. But Stuart Gordon was interested in H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. He kind of took these old stories of Lovecraft and put them in modern times with his own twist. Most of his movies were known for these over-the-top gross-outs, which a lot of 80s films were, and this From Beyond was definitely uh, no slacker in that. What kind of cool image is this section the main bad guy, what he kind of transforms into at one point. A movie stars Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton. Both Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton were in Reanimator. Uh, Jeffrey Combs would go on to Bride Reanimator as well. He got to work, like I said, with Barbara Crampton here from beyond. He would work with Barbara Crampton again in Castle Freak, which was also directed by Stuart Gordon. And was also produced by uh, Charles Band. But by the time Castle Freak came out, Charles Band had started Full Moon video. He was no longer making uh, theatrical movies anymore. As the 80s progressed, it was getting harder and harder for low-budget sci-fi and horror filmmakers to get distribution. The video VHS market was burgeoning, so he decided to take advantage of that. Started making his own straight-to-video movies. A lot of other people did it, but he wanted to start his own company that would do low-budget horror and sci-fi, but with some quality to it. Like I said, he'd, do, uh, he'd work with Stuart Gordon and uh, Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton and Castle Freak. That was in the 90s, but this is back in the 80s. This did get a theatrical release. This is before the days of Full Moon. It is on DVD. Care for it for your enjoyment. I remember watching it. When I used to live in New York, VHS. But, cool movie, nice effects, good gross outs. We're going to move on here to Holy Terror. This one's a bit different from the rest of my posters due to the fact this is actually not an original theatrical poster. This is for re release. The uh, original title of this movie is Alice Sweet Alice, which came out in the 70s. It did have Brooke Shields in it. Sometimes movies get re-releases, and especially in a low-budget horror film, they might, uh, they might get multiple. Uh, well, sometimes even different distribution companies would pick up the films. In the case, the reason they re-released this was because of Brooke Shields. Uh, when she was, I think, 16, she does the Calvin Klein jeans commercials. Nothing gets between me and my Calvins. Uh, she actually gained a lot of notoriety for that, and this the. Uh, Distributors of this movie decided to take advantage of that, so they released Alice Sweet Alice as Holy Terror, changed the title, and they added Brooke Shields' picture. This wasn't here originally, nor was introducing Brooke Shields. They did that just to capitalize on a newfound success at the time to help try to sell this movie. People who went to the theaters might be quite surprised because she was not 16 when she made this movie. She was just a young little girl, definitely not any kind of sex symbol at the time. Also, the artwork here is a little bit of a variation on the original Alice Sweet Alice poster, which had this kind of a mask. Uh, they kind of almost made this nun kind of look to go with the Holy Terror. But was, originally it was like a mask, and it was kind of sitting in the garbage bag with the doll in the front. I think in England they released this as Communion. I might be incorrect. I only bring that up because the director didn't, didn't like the title Alice Sweet Alice. It had a different name for it. They didn't use it in the States, but they did use it in England. Once again, this is a release poster uh, and put back out in theaters just for the sole purpose because they could use pork shields to try to bring in new money. Next up, they're here. Poltergeist. He knows what scares you. Very simple but effective poster. The little girl set in front of the TV set. Starring Joe Beth Williams, Craig T. Nelson. Music by Jerry Goldsmith. This was produced by Steven Spielberg, he did not direct it, Toby Hooper, best known for directing the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre back around 1974. He did some other low budget flicks, uh, Eaten Alive, which has various names. 
and titles. He did Fun House in the early 80s, and he started to get a little more mainstream. Like I said, this was a Spielberg production. A lot of money, big special effects ending. Uh, there's a bit of controversy of how much control Toby Hooper had over this movie. It looks more like a Spielberg flick. Spielberg was pretty much on the set most every day, and it has a lot of his that suburban glow that he liked to add to the things. I know a lot of his ideas came on there. There's a lot of people said Toby Hooper was basically a puppet, and that, that Spielberg basically directed the film. There's some contention in how much control Toby Hooper had over it. Uh, you focusing over here? I pulled this out for the sole sake of this. I have the soundtrack on vinyl. I don't know if it's glaring or not. Poltergeist the soundtrack on vinyl. Not too shabby. Paid a few bucks for it. I need to. This movie, of course, did uh, spawn a couple sequels, a part two, a part three. The young girl there died before they finished making them. The third film didn't have it quite filmed yet, and they had to film a couple scenes kind of without her. I think they used a, a double, but they just didn't show the double's face. This and also Poltergeist is a curse that goes to it. The fact that she died, but there's a few other people that died in the original movie. The first Poltergeist, the young young woman who played her older sister, she was mur she was murdered by her boyfriend, and I can't remember. She had finished. They, she had finished filming the movie, but I'm not sure if she did. Uh, I'm not sure if the movie came out by the time she died. But there's a curse supposedly so associated with Poltergeist. All right. I think that's all we're gonna go into Poltergeist. We're gonna move on to It's Alive. '70s movie. Larry Cohen, who did a bunch of another kind of B movie king, did the stuff in the early '80s, kind of a blob knockoff. Uh. This is kind of a neat poster. There's only one thing wrong with the Davis baby. It's alive. One film you shouldn't see, should not see alone. Just for that tagline, uh, it's worth it. In case you can't tell, uh, the crib here is a little monstrous baby hand come out. Basically, uh, there's a married couple and the wife gives birth to a mute little monster baby who goes running amok killing people. Makes quite a mess of things. It spawned increasingly worse sequels. Island of the Live comes to mind. I don't know. Don't the poster. I'm not going to talk about the movie. <laughs> they did make a remake of this. I think it went straight to DVD. I haven't seen this. I haven't even seen the original. It's live from quite a while. It used to be shown a lot when I was a kid. Uh, man, I don't know if I've got enough time to get to the next two posters. i got about three minutes. I'll try. So I kind of want to connect these two together. Maybe we can kind of talk about them together a little bit. But this is from H.G. Wells. This is based off of a short story, The Food of the Gods. This is a 70s film. Uh, very cheap. Marjorie Gortner was in it. Ida Lupino was in it. Uh, basically, just had a lot of superposed kind of using re real life mice. And they just kind of filmed the people against and added these superimposed mice later to make sense. Not a very good movie. It also has animal abuse in it since in the movie they show people shooting rat these giant rats with a shotgun and they get the effect. The filmmakers simply took a gun and blasted real life mice and you get to see in close up slow motion poor little mice flying apart and little blood bits coming off them. That's the 70s for you folks. There's no reason to be concerned about the animals back then. It's not the only movie to have done that. The Italians uh, cannibal films uh, did that a lot. Keaton the Spiders ran over a bunch of tarantulas in that movie. But uh, the reason I wanted to show these two together is another H.G. Wells Empire of the Ants. Another cool imagery and it's very similar to the Food of the Gods. In this case you got a giant ant over the woman instead of a giant rat over the woman. So you got the same artist, you got the same company. It was put up by uh, Sam Z. Arkoff and Bird Eye Gordon from American International Pictures, who ton uh, dumped out tons of drive in movies through the 60s and the 70s. And then kind of dried up the time the 80s came around, the VHS market, and <coughs> kind of killed, killed that off. Drive ins were dying off. They're just It was hard for these guys to get distribution anymore. It wasn't a lot of people showing their kind of films. But I did want to show these two together. They're both PG, both same companies, got the same style artwork. 
Uh, very neat artwork. I, there's no signature here, so I couldn't give credit to whoever did the art, but I definitely like this imagery quite a bit. I think we're going to finish up the, uh, the video with you guys looking at these two particular uh, posters. Uh, pretty cool stuff here.